Thank you. So I start, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, first, loves of the Bible um, may disappoint the young romantic uh, reader because the, the first time the word love, the root, ahov, ahava, love, appears in the Bible has nothing to do with a couple, not a man and a woman, not the love of a woman to a man. We are in biblical times, so we hardly can find uh, other kinds of, of uh, couples. But still, the first love in the Bible is the love of Abraham to his son Isaac. This is the first time the word appears in the verse, take your son, your only one, the one you love, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah and sacrifice him to me on one of the mountains. I will show you. And this verse shocks the reader so much that he doesn't even notice that this is the first modest, small appearance of love in the Bible. Uh, we don't even know about any other person in the Bible before Abraham, whether there was love in his heart or her heart towards anybody. We have the word passion or desire, tshuka, between Adam and Eve. But we have no other appearance of such a, uh, a feeling between uh, a, a couple. And I think by, by putting the first love between a father and a son, the Bible repeats the idea that uh, uh, was first uh, manifested in the first words of God about humankind, be fruitful and multiply, which means the... the, the uh, the main idea between a man and a woman becoming a couple, living together, is to create a family. If love is involved, then everybody can be very happy about it. But this is not the real thing between uh, a man and a woman, a couple in the Bible. This love story between Abraham and his son is also the first definition of love. We have... Uh, the famous question of our poet Bialik, Mazot Ahava, what is love? This, I dare say, criticize Bialik a little bit, is some kind of a spoiled little boy question. Everybody knows what love is. We know what is love when we experience love, and we know what is love when we experience the loss or the absence of love. But the trouble is, how shall we define love in words? But we know what it is. And here, when God says for the first time, and it's nice that the word love appears for the first time from the mouth of God, and not for, of a person or the narrator or the, the storyteller, when he says, Asher ahavta, the one you love, he also says, between the words, he says, well, now I also answer the question, what is love? Love is the feeling you have towards someone you love. This is the definition of love according to the Bible. This is the boy that you know the character, you know the nature of the feeling you have for him, you experience it, you live with it, you know it, and from now on you should know the name of this feeling is love. But we all know what we are talking about. This tragic love story of the sacrifice of the Akedah is ending with uh, uh, this connection, how would you say even more, help me with the nituk. With rupture. This rupture between the father and son. Because after the Akedah, Abraham and Yitzhak will not see each other anymore. They separate. They go separately, each to his place after the Akedah. And Abraham will not meet again his wife Sarah, his son Isaac, and also his God. The words of God about the Akedah are the last words God tells Abraham in the Bible. And I think this horrible, tragic affair ruptured these three connections of a man to his son, a man and his wife, a man and his God. And this is something that the Bible d does not emphasize, but the, 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 a close reading reveal, uh, reveals uh, this fact. 
Abraham later will try to correct this ter terrible uh, tragedy uh, uh, between him and his son by sending his slave to uh, his servant to the land of Haran, to the city of Haran in Mesopotamia to bring a bride for his son Isaac. Uh, the Bible says that Isaac was 40 years old when he was married and you should know, I guess you know, that a 40 years old Jewish bachelor is something that uh, aroused the attention of everybody around him. <laughs> Family, neighbors, uh, friends, everybody is curious to know how come such a nice Jewish boy from a good family at the age of 40 is still a bachelor. And the reader asks himself the same question. But this is a fact. I guess it has to do with the deep feelings Isaac had towards his mother, uh, which are revealed here and there in the Bible. But the first love between a man and a woman in the Bible is the love between Isaac and Rivka. It's Chak ve Rivka. Rivka is the girl that the servant chose for him in Haran, according to signs God gave him. And I want to read to you the beautiful description of the first meeting between the first loving, of the first loving couple in the Bible, first in Hebrew. ותישא רבקה את עיניה ותרא את יצחק ותיפול מעל הגמה. ותאמר אל העבד, מי האיש על הזה ההולך בשדה לקראתנו? ויאמר העבד, הוא אדוני. ותיקח הצעיף ותתכס. ויספר העבד ליצחק את כל הדברים אשר עשה. ויביאה יצחק האוהל השרה עמו, ויקח את רבקה, ותהי לו לאישה, ויאהביה, וינחם יצחק אחרי אמו. Now, in English, my translation, uh, simultaneously. And Yitzchak went to stroll in the field uh, uh, before evening. This is the life of an aging uh, bachelor uh, man. He has nothing else to do, no wife to talk to, no children to take care of. He finished his work. He is a man who is used to be alone, likes to be alone, and he's going out to the field for his uh, uh, thinking. And he raises his eyes and he looks far and he sees camels are coming. And Rebecca and Rivka looked and she saw him and she fell from the camel. She does, not, she does not know, of course, it's him. This is the man she is taken for. But still, Rivka is a very intuitive person. She has intuition. And she feels that this is the man she is meant for. She falls from the camel because Rivka is a very opinionated, strong woman. And she knows men may be afraid of such, such a woman. So she gets down from the camel. This is not, she doesn't fall because she lost her balance. It's a well-directed uh, and staged falling uh, that she uh, 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 thought about. She wants to be lower on the ground when, when she meets her, her future husband for the first time. And she asks the slave, who is this man walking in the field towards us? And the slave said, he is my master. This is the man. And she took her veil and covered herself. Again, to show her femininity, the inequality between, the biblical inequality between a man and a woman, to tell him that she accepts her role as a biblical woman. And the slave told Yitzhak everything he did, because for Yitzhak it was a big surprise. His father did not tell him that he's sending a slave to another country to bring him a wife. And then, take uh, special uh, 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 attention uh, to the order of the things that happen now. And Yitzhak brought her to the tent of his mother, and he took her, and he married her, and he loved her, and he had comfort or condolences after the death of his mother. This is the order the Bible likes. First, he brings her to the tent of the mother, even though the mother is already dead. Symbolically, he asks for the approval of his mother to this uh, uh, young bride uh, that was brought for him. 
Then he took her and married her. Marriage first, very important. Then he loved her. Love second, if at all, also very important. There are not many more couples loving, not very, uh, a lot of loving couples in the Bible. We have like, I think, 12 or so or 14 loving men and one loving woman, which is Michal to David. So uh, loving married couples in the Bible are not common. So Yitzhak, the first one, is, 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 uh, is privileged to have love in his marriage. And then he is comforted after the death of his mother. Behind the, the lines between the words, you can see uh, uh, that the biblical author really uh, uh, saves us about 40 pages of psychoanalysis of uh, Yitzhak that modern Hebrew writers will not hesitate to, to, uh, to put on our shoulders. Uh, he says that he has the, this tent of his mother. Now we know the mother is dead, so we understand that he keeps her tent. And whenever he wanders around in the land of Canaan after the, 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 the green grass for his sheep, he takes his dead mother's tent and he reopens it wherever he camps. It's like a, a memorial, a, 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 a mobile memorial of his mother that is with him all the time, with all her belongings inside. And maybe he uses this tent himself and now he brings his future wife inside. And then when he has condolences, uh, uh, am I using the right word, uh, comfort. comfort after comfort. her death beho because of his love to Rebecca. This is as if to justify the beautiful interpretation of Rashi saying that only after his mother died, Yitzhak was capable of marrying a woman. Again, Rashi too is, uh, is, is very nice to the reader and does not bother us with a big book of uh, uh, psychology. So this is the order the Bible wants to see uh, uh, the relationships between uh, a man and a woman. The approval of the parents, first it's a shiduch, then the approval of the parents, then marriage, then love, and then everything that will come afterwards. The second couple of the Bible who has love to each other, or at least the man loves the woman, is Jacob to Yaakov to Rachel. I want to read to you the first meeting of Yaakov, the son of Yitzhak and Rivka, to Rachel, his beloved. He also goes, brings, takes a wife in Haran, uh, uh, the same place from his mother's uh, family. And this time it's something completely different. Now Yaakov is a different person than uh, uh, from his father. He is a cunning person. He plans everything. He's suspicious. Uh, uh, he tries to, to have programs for everything he does. And this time, when he comes to the well in the Eretz Kedem, in the land of the east, and he meets the shepherds on, on the well, first there is the description of the well, which has this huge, very heavy stone on it that does not allow one or two or even three shepherds to roll the stone and take water for their sheep. They have to come, all of the shepherds from, from the desert around, maybe eight or ten people, and together to roll the stone, and then they can supervise the distribution of the water so no one will take more uh, water than uh, he deserves. And then Yaakov sees Rachel coming with the sheep of her father. So this is the order of things when Yaakov meets Rachel, very different from the first meeting of his parents. And when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Lavan, the brother of his mother, and the sheep of Lavan, his, uh, uh, his, uh, his uncle, because Yaakov is always between these two extremes, very romantic 
on one side, he sees Rachel, the beautiful Rachel, and gets very excited. But he also looks at the sheep. <laughs> and he sees how many sheep are there. Are they well fed? Are they being taken care of? And he's relaxed. This is a good flock of sheep, so he knows he came to a, a good rich uncle that he will not have to give a loan uh, 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 to. So he sees Rachel and the sheep, and then he rolls the stone from the mouth of the well. And he, give, he draws water from the well and gives water to the sheep. And he kisses Rachel, and he weeps, and he introduces himself, saying to Rachel, he is the son of Rivka, the sister of her father. Now, kacha mit nagim. Is, is this the, the right order to behave? I mean, you meet this beautiful young girl. You know she is your cousin. But she doesn't know. Why don't you introduce yourself first? No, but Yaakov has a plan. He kisses her. He, he rolls the stone as a stranger, a strange man, to impress her with his physical strength. He gives water to her sheep as a stranger, to show how gallant uh, and generous he is. He kisses her as a stranger. This is in North Iraq 4,000 years ago. You don't do such things. He weeps as a stranger. I am very sensitive, too. But, but again, here I'm not so sure. Maybe his, feeling, his feelings overcame him. And only then he tells her, he introduces himself and tells her that he is her cousin. Had he said from the beginning, I'm your cousin from the land of Canaan, then everything else he does would come as very natural, normal things. Cousins help each other, kiss each other. They may weep when they meet because they never saw each other. They can be nice to each other. This is very natural. But he wanted this first impression to be the impression of a strange man. And I guess when he kisses her, all the other shepherds, shepherds already rise from, their, uh, uh, from the ground holding their sticks. You know, this is not a, a, a nice, uh, uh, a polite behavior. But then he says, I'm your cousin. Everything is forgiven, but the impression was already imprinted in her heart. Now he goes to her. No, we have like four minutes. OK. It's, it's what I say. Now he takes her, she takes him to her house, to her father's house, and it is says that Yaakov loved Rachel and he wants to work seven years uh, for her till he will marry her. Here, love comes, comes before the marriage. With his parents, love came after the marriage. And God does not like this kind of uh, this order of things, this freedom that Jacob took to himself. And now he will educate him by having two wives. One will be loved and barren. One will be hated but fertile. And Jacob will learn in the hard way that the, the important things in the Jewish family, in the biblical Jewish family, are children. And he will learn it. I don't have the time to to uh, uh, tell the rest of the story, but you can read it in the Bible. I will just say one more thing, that on his deathbed, Jacob asked his sons many years later to be buried next to the hated woman, next to Leah, not next to the beloved woman, uh, Rachel. And this is something that on the national level is understood. The Jewish people need this mausoleum in Hebron uh, for the rest of, of their history. Uh, but for Jacob himself, as an individual, I think he wanted to preserve the element of longing and yearning. And this is his will to his children, the children of Israel, which is many of us here. And this has also a great deal of political significance. But this will be in another lecture. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you.